there. I'll let it back down a little bit in a minute. I'm just going to miss that off first. That is the nicest thing about coming back to a car that only you've worked on. Yeah. Come right out. Nothing is over tightened. in the front. So this caliper is stuck, won't rewind. The other side was super easy and this side won't even budge. We're gonna try and just apply a little bit of lubrication underneath the boot seal in the hopes that that will just free it up enough for us to be able to rewind it. And then hopefully it'll be good. If not, it's gonna need a new caliper as well. Be careful not to rip the boot, dust boot. I'll put that in there. Oh, come on. No. Mm -mm. That's it. Needs a new caliper. that you have to depress to knock the cable back through the caliper. See where the line st is stuck inside the nut? Mm -hmm. It's twisting the line around. So rather than break it, we can just twist it, twist the caliper off of the line rather than undo the nut. Otherwise it would have sheared off and because it's part of this line, I mean you can make up new brake lines but you, you would have to buy this new flexi hose. So we dodged a bullet there. These are 
are real fine threads so you can screw up pretty yeah. badly. Yeah. Maybe that's where the thing came from. Screw it up, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Just knit that up a little bit. That should be good. Yeah. Gone. It's pretty smooth though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So basically this part here just slips through there and then that's where this little locking ring want, came from. Bring, it's what, bring so it I think that little locking ring, one, ring we'll have to put back over there even though it's broken and then we'll just put a cable tie over it. Cable in, job done, handbrake fitted. So it can't really come out anymore, but that locking ring just kind of like holds everything in the right place. So we will slip that back over, and I think what I'll do is I will just put a cable tie to stop that from coming back out. I don't know if it's supposed to be that loose or not. I'm not sure. But in any case, we won't leave it to chance. We'll we'll clip something over that. So that's the ABS sensor there. And then this is the reluctor ring. So it's basically like passes this, the magnet creates a small voltage inside the sensor. It's a voltage producing sensor, which then sends a signal back to the ECU. And you can see there's little gaps in the ring of this, little gaps in it. So the quicker that the gaps go, means the faster the car's going. And obviously then it will display an average of all four wheels on the dash. And that's how fast the car's going. Okay. Three. Put on that back on. Oh. That's good. Is that the one that's stuck? Huh? Is that the one that's stuck? It was stuck, it's not anymore. Okay. Nice new one on there. be a big fan of reusing these but if it doesn't come with the new disc you have no choice it's just a dust cover so as long as it seals up nicely it's okay hey all the old rubbish this car here is pretty new so I wouldn't expect to find any corrosion or anything but um, you just want to inspect the whole thing Make sure there's no deep grooves or any rust, especially here. This little part here at the end, there can get a lot of corrosion buildup in there. And if you do get corrosion buildup in there, obviously the boot doesn't sit into it properly. And if the rubber boot doesn't sit into it properly, dirt, grease, water and stuff can get inside the pin and make it corrode even more. So it's got to be spotless really. Spotless as you can get it. And if it does have some mild scoring, like you can see this one here, there's like a slight shiny spot there. How well that comes across on video I'm not sure but that would be a little bit of wear basically and I could feel something you remember when we did the other side you could feel a little bit of metal on metal contact mm -hmm. yeah. it's where this wasn't greased enough before okay. and now it's got a slight wear spot is that bad enough to warrant replacement no so inside here is actually pretty clean already if you could see loads of grease build up inside the pinholes here um, you might want to clean them out I can pretty much just see metal. There was so little grease in there before it pretty much all came out on the pins. So what I'm just going to do is grease up these pins with red rubber grease. It's safe, it won't react with the with the rubber boot and it doesn't really dry out either. Great for lubricating slide pins. And what you need to do is get it in there, but you kind of need to like burp it, see how it's pushing itself out? It's because there's an airlock in there. That's not good. So what you'd have to do, or there's too much grease or both, is you kind of need to get all of the air out. See now, when it pushes in, it's not pushing itself all the way back out like it was before. That's kind of what we want, that kind of consistency. But if you push it in like that and nothing happens at all, you can even hear it. No grease. So that's like the complete opposite where there's way too much movement. So you want it to be tight and it's not too tight. You can see here I was talking about the corrosion. 
you can see a little bit of corrosion build up there just on the top of the head of the of the bolt it's not bad enough for me to want to go around and clean it it's still pretty clean but you can see that's like an indication of where it could start grease the slide pin as you can see you don't need loads just enough to keep it moving there we go and that's that done now we'll clean up the abutment clips and I always like to grease the slide pins first and get that sorted and then obviously now no dirt can get inside there now we'll clean up all this just gonna flip those out that's one just get a screwdriver underneath There's so much dirt on these man you just flick them up like that Okay, okay and then go. Just give these a little wire wheel. sand through any corrosion sit sand them and file through just want to take off any like peaks and stuff like that and make sure it's a good flat surface for the abutment clip to go back down on this is what causes the pads to pinch makes them hard to remove rust builds up here presses up on the pad and then the pad can no longer move in and out easily you have to be careful not to take off too much otherwise then the pads rattle so even though sometimes they may look like you've left a little bit of rust on it when the pads go back in you'll see that they move freely but not too freely to the point where they start making noise do. now once they get a bit tarnished it's not a bad idea to replace them many people will use them without any problems Unfortunately, it's getting more and more common that the, the, they just don't come in kits anymore. You order new brake pads and stuff, they don't come with any hardware. So you're kind of forced to reuse them. Clip these back in. Okay. It's okay if there's a little bit of spring in it, as long as you like, if you can move it easily with your finger because it's slightly misshapen, that's okay, the pad will hold that in place. But you don't want it to be like properly bent up and out of the way. Again, budget permitting, it's not a bad idea to replace these if you can. You can actually get away without using these at all. You don't have to put them back in, it makes barely any difference. There we go. Okay. Cool. Two go. The top one started first. Now these had Loctite on them um, and they've still got loads on them so I'm not going to bother putting on any more but if you wanted to clean that off and put on some fresh Loctite you can. Believe it or not they started putting Loctite on these bolts but some of the earlier models and believe it or not some of the different different models of Peugeot that have this exact same brake setup don't have Loctite on them at all so you can make of that what you will. I would probably put Loctite back on if there was Loctite on it unless it's in really good condition then I'd be happy to reuse it in the same way that you would reuse a nut that had like a nylon locking insert not really that much extra than what we just did with the 
with the ratchet. Okay, double check. Happy days. So I'm going to use the lithium grease on this a little bit. You just put it on the contact points of the pad, not loads though, because you want it to get on the actual friction material of the pad itself. And then when you slip it inside the abutment clip, like, like so, the pad should be able to move freely like that. So if the pad can move freely like this, yeah, as in like it's not getting pinched, you can move it in and out. That's fine, it's good. You don't want it to be too loose to the point where it can rattle. You want it just to be enough where you can move it like that. But like easily, like even just with one finger, like just wiggling it. That's good, it's not too tight. And then we'll do the same on the back. And sometimes you can have it where the front is perfect and then the back is like too tight and you literally have to remove this again and file off a little bit more. But it's better to do it right because it's the difference between the brake job lasting you know, like half the brake pad length or the whole thing and possibly even then being able to put a fresh set of pads on it and not replace the disc and save some money. See again, even just with your finger. Get just like a nice little, little bit of wiggle on it. So they're nice and loose, but they're tight enough so that then they're not gonna rattle. We don't really want any like up and down. You can see there's a little bit. You just want them to be able to come in and out like that. And you want them to be able to do that on both sides. And that's what the grease helps with. Very good. Now we'll just pop a little bit of grease on all the contact points where they're gonna meet up. A little bit on the piston. Not everybody does this. It's, again, so much controversy with, <laughs> with doing brakes. Now we've got to just be careful that we don't squish our clips there. There we go. Pop in that slide there. Okay. So you don't want to tighten that bolt up all the way. You want to get this bottom bolt here started as well first. Thirty-five newton meters. Yes, has that torqued down properly? So the nut was spinning, so possibly not. So we'll double check that one. That's good. And then the bottom. So like we've greased up basically any of the contact points. So now wherever the caliper is touching the pads, there's a little bit of grease on there, and you can see some of it squeezed out just a little bit here, just here in this corner. See they're just a tiny bit, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really squeeze out everywhere. You don't want to put on so much that it's like squeezing out right over the side, and obviously that's going to attract all the brake dust as it gets used. That would be not ideal. But what we do need to do is bleed this. So we'll have that off of there. Okay, get that connected up onto there. PSI. I need to film this bit. So basically all I do is I just leave this in the bottom of the bottle like that and then you can see all the little bubbles coming out that's air and I'll just leave that pressure bleeder on there until no more air bubbles come out and then that's the system bled so it's quite simple and quite easy. You could also do the same thing just by pumping the brake pedal as long as you leave this submerged in brake fluid it'll be fine, no air can go back into the system. So you can just keep pumping the brake pedal manually and just keep topping up the master cylinder to achieve the same effect. Okay, so just put the wheel back on and obviously you wanna double check all your handbrake and stuff is still operating as expected. So never tighten these things down with an impact gun. Just kind of like snug them down and then you can torque them down. Do you want to lift it up? We need to drop them on the ground now. 100 Newton meters. 
I know a lot of people don't bother to torque down the locking wheel nut, but it's bad practice to leave it just hand tight pretty much. The amount of them I find on the road is crazy. <laughs> 